Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the fourth Rebel quarterfinal of Season 10 playoffs. Uh, the final quarterfinal to see... Uh... And this is not me playing Pedro Jack. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with... A... I'm going to start with uh, pausing it. This is Archangel versus Lazarus Diggs. Lazarus Diggs won the toss and chose to receive, which against the one turning threat of this Adge 5, I think that's a bit... Uh... I think I would have wanted to kick, obviously with with uh, overtime potentially. If you receive, then um, on defense you don't need rerolls as much as you need them on offense. So I understand that, but uh, I think definitely it's an eleven man Woodell team. I would definitely, I think I would have chosen to kick and try to whittle down the numbers um, so that you can better chance of stopping the one turn. However. I've got to alert you to this setup. Um, <laughs> Archangel, he's in the quarterfinals. <laughs> he's playing against a frenzy player. And he just sticks out a player here. He's got no. He's only got. He hasn't got sidestep. I don't know if he. You know if he just got them confused or something. But um, yeah. What? What? I would have made this three dice as well. I, he didn't make it three dice. I don't think. But I mean, that's a three dice serve. You're giving up. Easily one, two, three, four, five, six. You can even fully protect. You could fully protect your uh, your guy afterwards as well. Unbelievable, outrageous setup. Um, I don't know what was going through his brain. It did take him four minutes to do the setup as well, so he hasn't really got any excuses for, for it. It's just outrageous. Um, and he does only make it three, two dice instead of three. But there you go. Gets the push and gets the serve. I mean, that is just, that is unbelievable, isn't it? Now, I would be disappointed to see that in the quarterfinals of the of the Rebel Rookie League. <laughs> unbelievable. Um, but there you go. <laughs> I don't know what the story behind that was. Maybe he got the catchers confused or something. And uh, so, yeah, he... he he moves back there. I, I I never I never mind having a tackler near the ball when you when you're against elves. So I, I don't mind this moving back and not getting him involved. You can straight up two D the tree with a beast, which is quite funny, isn't it? The amazing beast. Oh yeah, I didn't look at the teams, did I? So the teams. <laughs> sorry, I got sidetracked by that horrific horrific guard placement. Um, Archangel's got two guard catchers, a guard tree, and also a grab tree. He's got this edge five leap. Is obviously great. Um, he does not have pass block or nerves of steel because they're both crap skills. <laughs> Must be very upset to have two crap skills on him. He could have had like garden sidestep or something, but unfortunately he's got pass block and nerves of steel. Um, <laughs> he's niggled as well. Um, this dancer's got strip tackle. He's niggled. This dancer's got strength four. So like his team isn't that exciting because of the kind of rookie dancers, but obviously even this dancer with one skill is like better than the best dwarf runner ever, <laughs> which is pretty funny, isn't it? And like he's been amazing high elf catcher with four skill ups, but um, he's just nearly a rookie war dancer. And then the the Nurgle team is looks really it's really it's really bad the Nurgle team. He's basically only got a few skilled up players. Um, the Wrestle Frenzy is pretty pretty decent. Um, there you go. He's and he's KO'd. So there's one of his decent players gone straight away. He's got this amazing strength six beast, which is which is good to be fair. Um, but it's loads of TV. He's got a good warrior, and he's got a claw pommer. But that's all he's got. He's got no sure hands, no stats apart from the strength on the on the beast. And it's like it's grim, isn't it? It's it's grim for him. Um, yeah, he, he actually he's seventeen hundred TV. He got a bribe as his inducement. I would have gone, I think, for, uh... <laughs> I think I would have gone for the guy with sure hands, the star player with sure hands, what's he called? Loot Grip Whip Arm. I think I would have gone Loot Grip Whip Arm, uh, without even memeing, because it gives you an extra player, so it's like a bribe anyway, you know, it's kind of like a bribe anyway, and uh, you've got the sure hands to not get stripped, so... And and even strength three tenths is something, isn't it? Like you know, it's it 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 would it does work sometimes against people even who are stronger than you. An edge two it could work on, but uh, he just doesn't have a ball carrier, does he? He's carrying on this this fourteen SPP guy who is he's got block, but um, it's not great, is it? So another turn without a pom blitz. But it is definitely, it's definitely understandable, they uh, keeping him near the ball. 
I don't hate that at all. Stays out of strip range, which is a good idea. <laughs> he does only have three warriors as well. I don't know if one's missed next game or dead or whatever. But he does only have three warriors. Three warriors in the beast as his strong boys. Yeah, the, the, the tree on the beast, the, the, the beast on the tree, at least he can just straight up 2D him with, it, with it. like his handler can can make the activation. And then if he gets the knockdown at any point, he can do one, can't he? Now he can, next turn, if if uh, if the tree man ever fails to stand up, if he keeps knocking the tree down, because he's got block and the tree doesn't, <laughs> so it's a 75% knockdown each time if he activates. Any time he knocks him over and he doesn't stand up, he can he can run away, can't he, and, and tentacle some elves. So I, I don't hate it at all. I think it's probably what I would have done. So uh, Archangel puts a quite a force down to pressure this turn, which I think maybe he didn't need this many players um, down the side. I think he maybe didn't need so much down the side. Maybe he could have uh, kept a higher line up here. These two could have both been one square forward. These two could have both been, therefore, one square forward as well. And maybe the dancer could have been behind there. I don't know. I feel like he didn't need to make such a forward commitment. Yeah, but it. Yeah, don't hate it, no. But you know, now he's failed the stand up, right? So now he can now he can get the uh, get the tense in. I would have liked getting it on the edge five. Um, And I would also like using the guard to protect against the strip, seeing as the strip is over here. And you can only hit your... Um, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight GFI. So you can really only hit you from from here. So if you put the uh, guard there, then you're pretty safe, aren't you? But instead he blitzes with Mighty Blow. Uh, so I think guard at this cage corner would have, would have stopped any strip shenanigans, pretty much. But... He doesn't do that. He gets he, and he blitzes him and then puts him on three. I would have rather put him on the edge on the edge five to be honest, but obviously I understand <laughs> putting him on a strength four dancer. And then the take root fails, and the stand up fails again. And now he's got the leap one D on, hasn't he, for the strip? And I, I I don't blame him going for this at all. Quite like this play. I thought this was very doable. Um. The problem being, he uses reroll on the leap. So he gets the strip, and he's got the scoring threat, who isn't in any any stink squares. And the edge five could just jump in. Well, this here's the thing, right? Because you've used your reroll, do you go for the recovery with the edge four? That's the question, isn't it? The edge four could go for the recovery. Um, he's quite close. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or something. Get out the stink and lob it. Um, but the thing about him is he's uh, he's got sidestep. So if you fail the if you fail the pickup, you're not served. Whereas if you go for the pickup with the, ad, the recovery with the edge five, you can lob it from the square he's in, which is which is good. But if he fails the pickup, he's getting served, which is not good. <laughs> that is not good. And he, but he gets the one in nine and doesn't get the serve off. Unbelievable. Um, he gets the pom hit on the war dancer. Does not follow. Unbelievable. Uh, disturbing presence, uh, Pedro. I can't believe he didn't f he didn't pile on there. Um, outrageous, outrageous play. But you can see the point why he didn't because you know he, he probably should have gone there for the assist with him, so he'd have still had this guy out and had a cage, and then he could have gone for the recovery with this rotter. So instead, because he's got basically an irrelevant player here, almost, um, he's got to go for the surf, right? He just has to. Um, he hasn't got anyone to pick up the ball, has he? So, if you're going to do that, you might as well just pile on, right? You? So, <laughs> that's what I think, when you've got the, because the strip, he's got no sure runs. I quite like the uh, dodge through here to pick it up, but he, he doesn't do it. He doesn't do it. It does indeed, um, 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 um. and not, it's not negated by nerves of steel. So yeah, I really like the I really like the dodge through there. We didn't go for it, and uh, also he had the wrestle here. He could have um, the wrestle could have run around and one deed him to get a scatter, and maybe something could have happened. 
you know, crazy bounces or whatever. Uh, I didn't think it was a particularly great play, but it was an option he had. And now he's got, he's only got seven players. Um, the tree's absolutely failing every turn to stand up. And he just dodges away from the tentacles, no problem. <laughs> yes, ugly. Ugly is foul appearance. And stink is disturbing presence. And yes, uh, disturbing presence does. So there you go, he makes the dodge away from tense. Strength sinks tense, not a problem. And then he'll pills him. <laughs> but uh, doesn't get it. Crazy stuff. He could three dice blitz with the uh, beast now, couldn't he? Get an assist in and then three dice and get on two. But he goes for a pom hit. Follows this time. And piles on. Good lad. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Ah oh, yeah, fair. So now, now he makes the pick up on that guy, and he's gonna he's gonna foul this dancer, isn't he? He's got to. Got to foul this dancer. I like putting him there as well as the kind of, you know, further away cage corner. It's a dirty player foul. It's a Kaz. Huge. Will he apo it? He does. I, I quite like the Apo, but Niggle as well, wasn't it? I mean, he's 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 niggled and he's got a dirty player, and he rolled an 11 anyway, but <laughs> um, that was a great foul to go for. And <laughs> he actually used his reroll on the foul appearance fail there, which I thought was a bit needless. Um, I'd like to have not seen a reroll there, but there you go. <laughs> Again, he's dodged away from the the strength six tens. Haven't held anybody. <laughs> haven't held anyone yet. <laughs> Doesn't go for the three D on the good player. Goes for the guy who's like more in the way, which is absolutely fine. Doesn't pile on. Outrageous, isn't it? It's outrageous. He doesn't like piling. Uh, Lazarus Diggs just does 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 not like piling on. Now I understand the, obviously the reasoning probably behind not piling on here is because by keeping him on his feet he's got the threat of blitzing anybody any turn you know like for example the strength four dancer and stuff um so you want to have the tackle on his feet so he can he can blitz people but also you want to kill shit don't you so uh so you know maybe he could have piled on sometimes he didn't but Yes, exactly, Winfair. I know you can't mindlessly pile on. I'm not saying you shouldn't mindlessly pile on, but I do think he was a bit... I, I, you know, I'm, I'm saying I would have liked to see more pylons. Um, but I absolutely understand why he wouldn't pile on, of course. I, I've, I've played many a game versus elves where I only have one tackle and I'm not able to pile on as much as I would like. You know, Only don't pile on if it costs you the game to pile on, basically. Um, and there's times where you, maybe it could have done. So it's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. I'm just pointing it out. I would have still piled on probably. <laughs> and regretted it. <laughs> maybe. Um, there you go. Tense again. Fielding. This is four out of four of, of escaped tentacles. And now it looks like Archangel's just giving up the score, eh? Just running away. I guess he does have the chance of a, of a leap in. Um, even if he's got guard on the cage corners, he's still going to get a 1D, isn't he? With that dancer. Ah, uh, because he was next to the tentacles, he did fail the tentacles there, didn't he? And uh, got hit and got piled on. Um, so the tentacles did something. <laughs> and the pylon didn't even break armour. And now, now you realise why he's, why he's never piling on. Because it did nothing. <laughs> He's used to he's used to playing Blood Bowl and failing absolutely everything. <laughs> yes, please nobody get offended. Oh dear. 
This is a, this can be a a 1D on the ball, can't it? With a strength 4 if he wants it. Which he probably does, because it's not super easy for the uh, Nurgle to recover. Finally stands up on turn 7. Well done, Tree. And double ones on his way to, to block the assists. Then he would have left in one deed. That all fails. Um, he can probably do a 3D here, can't he? Now he regrets piling on no doubt because he could have piled on that catcher. <laughs> yeah, he can't foul now, though, can he? <laughs> And he just does the three dice blitz. If he could have been greedy, couldn't he? He could have gone for the uh, beast block, and then if that didn't get the, you know, he could have risked triple scores. Then he could have blitzed the dancer. But, uh, it's absolutely fair not doing it. So there you go. The nerd will get the stall, and the uh, apple has gone for the woodies, isn't it? But they've still got eleven players, which is. Pretty much dreamland for the Woodies, isn't it? Still having 11 players after a half against Nurgle. Um, but he didn't. He hardly piled on. He hardly hit with a tackle power and hardly piled on with it. So it's not too crazy. And he's down to 10, actually, isn't he? They've, they've been outbashed. The Nurgle have actually been outbashed in this half. <laughs> with, uh, with old bubonic Barry there sitting on the sidelines. So yeah, you know Archangel's got a really good chance of one turn. Add five, leap. He can, uh, he can. No backline. It's pointless backlining because he can just leap over it. Um, the thing is, he wants stink. Sorry, disturbing presence in the right places, doesn't he? And uh, he can only get two. He can realistically only get two disturbing presences on the ball, um, like on the catch. So. Obviously, he's going to go the, the way the side where there isn't the stand firm guy. So he's going to he's going to try and get this way, and he can't really get him to this far forward. Um, realistically, he can't. So he's going to be in in one or two uh, disturbing presences, but that's okay because it's still three plus, right? Because he's got he's got nerves of steel. So <laughs> whatever happens, it's uh, it's a decent shot at the one turn, and he can pass from here this line, can't he? Safely. <laughs> I know that was shit, but yeah, you could have been playing this. Lady Kill Giant. And it looks like he set it up wrongly here. I really don't understand this setup. Um, and then he gets a quick snap to fix it. So, you know, watch this live. He's, both players spent four minutes setting up their setups. And uh, and then what does he do here? Because he, he, if he pushes and blocks him to here, with the, uh, if he grabs with a tree here. Was then his idea to blitz through tentacles? I mean, go through tentacles to leap to, to stop this square? I guess he was going to leap to, to block off this square with a dancer. I guess the dancer was going to leap over here. And then he was going to punch with a catcher to there. And then punch with the lineman to here to get the two squares. And then maybe a third. But um, as it happened... As it happens, uh... yes, Nurse of Steel don't care about disturbing presence, but the point is, he's only he's still a three plus to catch, right? He's only in two disturbing presences. Even if he's in three tackle zones, it's still only a minus two, which is a three plus because he's edge five, and he can't get away from them. So uh, pass block is a normal general skill. So now he puts the tree in the right square where it should have been from the start. Like unbelievable, he got he got a big uh, he got a big uh, bail out there. Did Archangel <laughs> getting to move his tree into the correct square <laughs> to do, <laughs> to, do <laughs> to do the to do the one turn correctly? And he didn't fill in this square because he, he could have got the guy an extra square forward there. Um, but as it happens, he didn't get the power, so he was able to get him another forward anyway. I think he probably should have filled in that square um, first. But because of the because of the quick snap, he just gets to knock this guy down as well. And now he can blitz here, so he doesn't have to dodge with the catcher on three dice, or he could blitz him for a chance of casting him to make the to catch a two plus. Um, neither one matters much. <laughs> this might have stopped the intercept as well. So maybe maybe this was better to blitz the uh, noble warrior actually. Maybe, arguably better to blitz the noble warrior. I don't think it matters too much. 
So he gets forward. Three plus catch. Three plus pass. Three plus catch. Easy as you like. And he's off. And I think there was an intercept chance, was there? Oh. Oh, he's, he's filled the GFI. Oh, nearly didn't score it. I think there was an intercept chance there, so maybe he should have uh, blitzed that Noble Warrior. There was an intercept chance. So, yeah, I think probably intercepting... Stopping a 6-plus intercept has got to be better than stopping a 1-in-36 dodge, hasn't it? So I think he, he should have definitely blitzed the Noble Warrior there. Because he would have also had a chance of casting the Noble Warrior. Um, and thus removing the Disturbing Peasants. But, you know, still he scored the one turn. <laughs> he, he needed 14 minutes. Um, he needed 14 minutes and a, uh, and a quick snap, but he did it. <laughs> so that's good. Um, maybe it will do, but again, it would have been better to blitz him, wouldn't it? It would have just definitely been better to have blitzed that Noble Warrior. Um, either way you look at it, it would have been better than blitzing the uh, Pestigal, 100%. But yeah, maybe you could have done the GFI. thing with that, you're never sure, are you? You're never sure if you can avoid it, so you don't want to do it, and then look an idiot because you're not avoiding anything. Uh, but maybe you could have done Maybe it would have made the pass even easier as well. Maybe. Maybe it could have been really good. Uh, maybe it could have been good. Maybe you should have done the pass earlier. Um... And made it a 2 plus pass, shouldn't he? Probably should have done the pass early and made it a 2 plus pass because it was still being a 3 plus catch. So he probably should have done the pass earlier as well to make it a 2 plus pass. And definitely no intercept. So yeah, he should have done the pass first, probably, shouldn't he? Yeah, he should have done the pass first. And, uh. But you know, it's nitpicky, isn't it? He still, he still found it eventually in the time that he had. <laughs> so fair enough. And, uh. This is, I think, where I started paying less attention to the game, so this will be a bit new for me as well. <laughs> I don't like not, not giving the tree the assist there to start with. Blitzing him's all right. Um, I wouldn't have hated going for the dirty player, though. I guess, yeah, you, know, like you could have made these blocks, but then he hasn't got block on that one, so this is the kind of safer thing to do, isn't it? Hit the uh, hit the pest there. Oh, you could have hit this one. I think, you know, you want to hit defenseless, don't you, really? Just numbers. He only really cares about numbers and quality targets, doesn't he? So, obviously, if he could, if he could randomly cast one of the two good pestigors or the good uh, warrior, wherever he is, um, there he is. If he can cast one of these four good players, but all the rest, it's just, uh, you just want them off the pitch, don't you? So, defenseless players, better. Are we gonna see a cheeky pass? No, I thought he might. I thought he might have just passed it straight up to him that, there. So he's he's hung this catcher. He doesn't like he doesn't like this catcher, does he? First, <laughs> first half he let him be served instantly. <laughs> and this half, he's uh, he's begging him to get tackle pumped. <laughs> Beast on three players again. Very nice. Pals him. And again, doesn't pile on. Means okay. Now, now he's got two tacklers. So now he, uh, now he, you know, you could argue he could be piling on a bit more freely this half. He still has his bribe, doesn't he? So he's getting this foul in rather than piling on. And uh, gets it, Kaz. But he uses his bribe. At least it works. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I think I would have piled on there and then just kept the other, kept the other goat as you wrestle for the for the next time. But you tackle. You, I mean, you do. You obviously, you do want your tackle to be free to do stuff. I don't like this one dice. I don't like a one dice. We can just make it a two dice. And then this one dice blitz and reroll. I mean, that's just a, that's a one. That's a two plus five plus to do anything basically, isn't it? The push doesn't matter. That was 
horrible. <laughs> it's a horrible decision. <laughs> and he's punished with a badly hurt. <laughs> See, because now this guy, with him not piling on, he's not even close enough to blitz anyone anyway, is he, really? He's going to have to GFI to blitz. Could He could hit the tree without GFIing. Which um, I don't hate. I honestly don't hate the hitting the tree here. You could block there and then get two assisted and, and 2D the tree. 75% knockdown. Um, the tree hasn't been very relevant, obviously, first half. He rooted and was, was down for the whole half. But it's alright getting rid of him, isn't it, if you can? And he's going to hit the sidestepper away from the uh, beast here, probably. I would just get block or break tackle. Uh, Mad Sentio. He does block block the catcher away from the beast. I kind of don't like that. Unless he didn't have sidestep, so you're going to surf him afterwards. Uh, because that gives him a pretty decent shot to score, doesn't it? Uh, if he wants to. Because I think I think Archangel at this point he's he's not even down men really, is he? He's a, he's he's on nine. Um. I think you'll be happy if he scores at any point, really. I don't think he's going to care too much about stalling until turn 16. And, uh... Oh yeah, this is the this is the phantom screen. This is uh, this is a play here. Um, so he does a three plus catch there. And runs over this direction. So I'm thinking, right? I'm thinking the play here. Leap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. GFI, GFI. Right? And then you've got him screened, right? Um, that doesn't happen. What happens is a dodge into a pow. Into a stand nowhere like really weird like if you're going to stand there then maybe move your catcher to here and and GFI with him to close it off you know if that's your play I mean I didn't even think of that play because I because I was you know kind of calling what he was doing um, but if, if you've thought of this play you know which you probably would have been if you're playing right um, but you've got to get away from tense then maybe you do it first and so then you can make the screen and then put him in the, you know, behind the screen. If he catches there, he's safe. Whereas now he's got the old one, two, three, four, five, six GF. So a dodge double GFI to three dice him. You can GFI with him for the assist. I like GFIing for the assist first. Um, one, two, three, four, five GFI, and then he goes one, two, three, four, five, six double GFI three dice. They obviously don't have recovery, so it's not amazing. You could you could leave this guy, couldn't you, and maybe recover with him, if you get a if you get a f favorable bounce, you could recover with this guy. But he moves him into there, which is okay, I guess. Makes the first GFI. makes all the rolls and gets the power. Now here, he's armor seven niggled. Yes, good pylon. I, I like the pylon because you've pretty much got to break his AV. And while you could, yes, you could keep a tackle zone on the ball and tackle on the ball. You could have done that. But what does he do? He rolls a two plus, two plus, two plus and scores. Um, <laughs> or he does, you know, he does a two, oh, he's got tackle there, but he just two pluses away with dodge, one days you, and then to two plus with a reroll. And, you know, so like, it's just too easy to to deal with him. So I really like going for the pylon and try to get rid of this edge five. I, I like that pylon a lot. Uh, obviously he didn't get the look. <laughs> so yeah, now you can see why Lazarus wasn't piling on before, right? He's piled on twice and both times he hasn't even broken AV. <laughs> and he, he probably could have he probably could have stalled here. Um he had like he had uh 
some dodging and some chaining and stuff he could have done. He could have probably made a three-man screen, but um, at least a two-man screen in the corner. But it's totally understandable to just get take the touchdown there. Don't hate it. So now the Nurgle. Uh, that's the question, isn't it, Umum? Um, um. That's the question. Uh, or maybe they use the rotter for the recovery. Uh, the rotter was in the way. That was the problem. The problem was Umum. Um, um. This is the problem. The rotter was actually in the way. You had to walk where the runner, where the rotter was. Um, otherwise, you'd have had to dodge. So um, you had to move the rotter first. So using the rotter as an assist, I think, was the best play. Um, so yeah, that, that was. The, if you could have not moved the rotter, I think definitely you would have just made it two D. But the fact you had to move him out of the way, um, I think you had to move him first because like the tree was there and stuff. So you, 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 he was blocking the path. You know, there was like basically there were like players here and here. So you'd you'd have had to go there and make a dodge. No, but you no 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 that was that that dodge was one as well. But, you know, the ball was over here. And there was like a kind of not really a screen, but he was just blocked by his own player, so he'd have had to make an extra dodge. And it was definitely wasn't worth making an extra dodge to maybe have a, a foul or a recovery from that guy. So he did the right he did the right thing there, I think, making it three days. So there you go, the elves get another re-roll. But they've only got nine players to stop the skull. They don't have the stripper, which is obviously pretty huge. They do have a a strength four dancer and four rerolls. They can, they can go for it if they want. Um, no, yeah, the, the, the dodge of the pesticle was essential because it was a dodge and two GFIs to hit. And again, he's kept the uh, he's kept the pommer back, hasn't he? He doesn't want to uh, he doesn't want it to get picked off by the hidden mighty blow of the war dancer, which is absolutely fine. You know, if you can't protect it, if you can't protect him, then uh, then it's bad news. Oh no, he is here. Okay, I was I was lying. I was completely lying. I thought this guy was back defending the ball again. Does not hit the defenseless player. But hits the dodge. So he is protecting him with the guard. So I ignore, disregard what I said just then. <laughs> Beast gets on one guy. Doesn't keep him next to the warrior. Um, I think, I, you know, okay, he's going to put this in as well. Okay, that's fair enough then. But I think I would have rather had him next to the warrior there. And then your rotter can go in the middle here to stop a uh, a tree blitz team split. Uh, incidentally, in the first half, there could have been a tree block team split as well with a, with a with a really stupid beast. Um, the elves, I think, could have split the whole team in the first half. Could have split the team here. Absolutely, I wouldn't have hated this at all. Uh, I mean, it wouldn't have to be a tree blitz. It could have been a, it could have been a dancer blitz, and then he could have got people through there. Oh yeah, it could have been on two players. Yeah, I don't know why he wasn't on two players. Yeah, it could have just been on two players, and then he would have been next to him as well. I just thought that was a, <laughs> well, I just thought he's putting, he wanted to put him there. His technicals work, but yeah, he should have just put him here, shouldn't he? And then he's next to the warrior, and uh, and he would have had two players stopping the break through the middle. But horrible look from Archangel again, failing the first take route. And yeah, this was not not something I liked. <laughs> Really wants to make removals, doesn't he, to uh, to stop the uh, elves stopping him. Getting an assist for the two D. Um, Based on the rooted tree, I don't, I don't get assisting the two DB. I don't get, but three dicing guys is good. Oh, I would 
have liked an assist there and then pushed pushed him into the tree, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you push him into the tree? I don't like not pushing this guy into the tree. Um, dodging away there, fair. Like, sure, he could have committed two more players to block him. But I think dodging away is fine once you've gone there. A rondo basing there with a sidestep. Plus it gets him a scoring threat, doesn't it? Yeah, I quite like that dodge actually, trying to get something happening, you know, worrying about the ball. I don't know about this base here. I don't know. I feel like maybe he should maybe he should have concentrated on just keeping in front of the Nurgle here, because he is down players, isn't he? Maybe he should have just tried staying in front. Because he's given him the space to get forward, hasn't he? It does only lower. Uh, I think it was bugged at first on fumble. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Or maybe maybe on Blood Bowl 2 it was bugged. I think it was bugged. If Blood Bowl 1 maybe it was bugged. I think Blood Bowl 1 I think it was bugged. At first. Gets the AV break. Will he pile on? Nope. Refusing to pile on. Missed that guy behind the tree there. But, uh... He gets the gets the KO, so no one has to be confused about the Anarian player hiding behind the tree. <laughs> and yeah, this basing gets stunned. I, I really don't like the random bases like that. To be honest, I don't think he was doing a whole lot. And now he dodges away from the <laughs> from the base tree that he based, <laughs> the uh, rooted tree that he based last turn. Uh, yeah, interesting. Tentacles there. He's, he's got a two D on the ball here, hasn't he? Um, and he makes the dodge and then he makes the leap away because he didn't select blitz when he did the blitz <laughs> oh <laughs> so um <laughs> that's pretty tragic isn't it he would have had 2d on the ball there um, but he didn't select blitz at least, he at least he didn't make the mistake of doing the leap and then realising he hadn't selected blitz at least he realised he hadn't blitzed and then leapt away. But um, yes, with a four minute turn, he still didn't select blitz and uh, <laughs> just ran around. <laughs> just danced around being a war dancer. Has to pile here, doesn't he? Strength four dance. If he doesn't pile here, uh, I don't know what to say. No! Come on, man! How do you not pile there? That's that's restraint, that isn't it? That is, that is some hardcore restraint from Lazarus Diggs. I could not be that restrained. <laughs> I would have piled on that guy instantly. I mean, I guess it gives you the chance to pile on the strength five, the edge five next turn. Uh, he is out of the game, but you're playing for overtime, right, Lazarus Diggs? Uh, Lazarus Diggs backyard order. You're playing for overtime. You're two. You're losing two one. So you're playing for overtime. Do you want to? Do you want to fight a fucking strength four dancer in overtime? I don't. <laughs> I don't want to fight a strength four dancer. <laughs> oh, good day, Nick. I did it in the World Cup. Either in the World Cup qualifiers, I think I did a. I did a blitz that wasn't a blitz. I, I, I misclicked or miss, you know, misordered and everything. So yeah, he, now he piles on at least. At least now he piles on because there's not going to be another turn. Um, and did nothing as well, by the way. He's, he's piled on like every time he's piled on, he hasn't even broken arm. It's ridiculous. He just <laughs> it's crazy, crazy how much he's failed with the the piling on guy. But I would have piled on the uh, strength four hundred percent. Um. So we've gone to overtime. Two injured. Neither KO comes back. Huge. And the elves win the toss. So only seven players. But they've just got a two turn, right? Amazing, really, that the Nurgle haven't taken any damage at all. Um... 
no damage at all in a, in 16 turns with only armor 8. And like, okay, the Woodies have only got one mighty blow, but that's still pretty lucky to still have a full 11 um, at this stage. So, surely he'll put the strength 4 guys on the wings, right? So it's not easy to break through. Um, he may just dodge through then. So you want something in the back? I, I quite like this guy in the back, actually. But um, it's tough, isn't it? It's really tough. But you've got to at least make it not possible for them to blitz through the side easily. But he did. And he's also, it's asymmetrical. He's got a random dirty player on the line here. I don't know if he just didn't see him or what. But um, you would, you've got to put your strength guys on the out, outside and on the inside here. So we can't break through the inside and you can't break through the outside, I think. Um, I really don't, I really, well, not even didn't like. I hated the Nurgle setup here. Because it's just it's just seeding all this field position, isn't it? Uh, one of the guys who can react is movement four, even though he's got break tackle. So he, he effectively, with a double GFI, he can get to the sideline. So I don't hate the beast being in the middle here to try and react. Um, but you've at least got to have the dirty player here as well, right? Um, just to stop him getting tagged as well. And this just like it's hardly even a defence, is it? This basically. Hardly, hardly a defense. Hand off in disturbing presence is fine because he's at five. I feel like <laughs> this catcher should have been here. <laughs> because um, <laughs> he's put, it's for golden goal, um, um So the first person to score wins. So it's just absolutely huge to win the toss. Um, if nobody sc scores, then it comes down to a roll off where you add your unused rerolls. Pretty much nobody's used a reroll in the entirety of uh, the second half, to be fair, which is crazy. So now here, you play here is, you either blitz this guy and then try to break tackle the beast in to put the beast on the uh, strength two, strength six to strength two, or you go for the four plus dodge in to surf this guy. So I can see why if he, if he puts him there, then you don't have to break tackle. So that so I can see, uh, you know you can just blitz and then put him on. So I can see why you put him there. Um, if you put him one back, then it's double dodge to surf him. So probably one back would have been better than one in actually. One back is probably where he should have been. Um, so yeah, so all you've got to do is do the dodge right. So you do the dodge first because if you fail this dodge in, you've lost. So. <laughs> Um, you can't break tackle and go for the dive after because it's a double dodge, right? So yeah, so if you play as close to the line, so he can't, he can't go three, he can't go three in here, he can't go three in, he has to be two in, so, but he has to be one back, one back he's safe. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, also he could the dancer could have been one in, so he couldn't go for both because it'd been a double dodge, but he could have blitzed this guy and gone for the dodge, the break tackle in. But he goes for the he goes for the surf, and he fails it. And he just shouldn't have moved anybody. I think it was really terrible moving all these players because if you fail that, he just scores, right? <laughs> all of these moves are completely pointless because if you fail the surf or the knockdown or whatever, if you fail if you fail this if you fail to knock over the ball, you've lost hundred <laughs> percent. So you do that first. See if you surf him. See if you get a both down. See if you get a pow. See whatever happens, and then move everybody. It was absolutely... Ooh, well, look at them. Lovely orc titties. Um, it was absolutely nonsensical to do safe moves first in that situation because if you fail that, you... Um, ah, the stink to maybe mess up pass plays in the bad... Yeah, okay, okay, scroll dude. Maybe maybe catching it. Yeah. So, yeah, you may be moving disturbing presence to affect catch rolls for scatters. That, that's, that's fair. That's actually fair, yeah. That's actually fair. I mean, I wouldn't say pass up, mess up pass plays, but yeah, catch, catching. Yeah, okay, catching is fair enough. So he could have moved the, he could have moved the, the Nurgle Warriors, yeah, for sure, and the, and the Beast for disturbing presences for catches. That's absolutely fair. Good point, Squirrel Dude. I was totally wrong. Um, but outside of the three Warriors and the Beast, you shouldn't move anybody else because they can't affect it at all. Unless you're putting Tackle Zones on in case of... Yeah, in case Tackle Zones in case of Scars is fair. But I still don't like it. I still like just doing the Blitz and seeing what happens. But it doesn't matter. So there you go. Edge 5 won by itself pretty much, didn't it? Uh, I think he scored all the th all three touchdowns there. Um, he did. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, 
<laughs> I can admit I'm wrong. Yeah, I can. I can do that. Unbelievably, uh, Johnny Five. I often admit when I'm wrong. Um, well, every time I'm wrong, I admit it, and I do it regularly. Unlike some people who will fight to the bitter end to defend what they've done, I all I always look at uh, other, what other people's point of views. So yeah, that was absolutely right. And uh, yeah, he got he got two AV breaks and won the match, which is crazy, isn't it? But turns out movement. Eight with sprint and edge five is pretty good. <laughs> so there you go. Right. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.